All right, what's going on friends? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use this Bissell Crosswave Pet Pro. I'm gonna clean this floor that I'm sitting on now, and I'll show you here my kitchen. I'm gonna clean that whole entire floor. Now, I'm not gonna show you that whole thing. You'll be sitting here forever. I'm gonna show you how I use this, how like the two buttons up top here work, and how the trigger and the handle works. And then at the end, I'm gonna tear this apart, and I'm gonna clean this. And I'm gonna give you a few tips on what you gotta do to keep this thing from stinking. If you read some of the comments on Amazon, you'll see people complain about it smelling. Well, I think there's some real easy things you can do and it will never smell. And this will make cleaning your floors so much easier, so much faster. If you like this and you don't already have one, I will have a link to this down in my description if you wanna check that out. And I'll also try to put that in my first comment. But I'm gonna do, let me show you. I'm gonna do this whole entire floor right here from over here by the wall all the way over here to where my bar is i'm just going to do that area and i'm going to do this whole floor in here where my living room is now minus i'm not going to move the furniture and you can't see it i did have a fourth of july party yesterday and there's let me see if i can zoom in there is yeah right there we had some lemonade and it was in one of them jugs that you could had a little spigot on it, I guess. And the spigot must've been dripping. So there's sticky lemonade stuff all over the floor right there. So we'll see how that comes up. All right, here's the lemonade. Also gonna show you what this tray is for in this little measuring cup. If you did buy this brand new, it should have came with two bottles of the cleaning formula, multi-surface. So it should be good for wood, tile, and an area rug. I'm not doing no area rugs today, but I am gonna do wood and tile. All right, let me get the, you can just turn this piece here at the top to get your cord off. So that'll be ready to get plugged in. And then this is, this container right here is where you're gonna put all your water and cleaning formula. Just pull straight up on that, it comes right out. I already, I still have a little water in here. There's two areas on the bottle that measure where your water and formula go. If you just have a smaller area, you can go to this first one. If you have a larger area, you can go to the second one. So I'm gonna to go to the second one since I'm doing two big spots. And then if I have some left over, maybe I'll do a little bit extra somewhere else. I'm gonna fill it all the way up to here with water. And then when I get the water all the way filled, I'm gonna fill the rest with formula. And I wanna make my water as, as hot as I can get it. I think you can put in here up to, oh, it says right here, you can go up to 140 degrees. So I know I can make my water as hot as I want and it's never gonna be 140 degrees out of my hot water heater. All right, one more thing. I did not vacuum my floors in the living room or out here in the kitchen. My water should be up to temperature. Let's take this cap off, fill that all the way up to where it says water. All right, there. Now the bottom of that is flat, so you can just sit it there. And then put your cleaning formula in there. I'm gonna put that all the way up to that top line. And kind of mix that up a little bit. Bottle with your formula and water will just slide right back down into there. This clicks into place, easy. All right, the buttons on the top of this are area rug and hardwood floor. So I'm gonna just use the hardwood floor one, the area rug one, all that really does is put more soap on the floor. So if you have a spot that's really bad and you think you just want some more cleaning formula and water, you could turn that one on and it's just gonna put a little extra. But I don't think my floors are that bad, so I'm gonna just use the hard floor one. And then you got the trigger underneath here. Now, every time you pull that trigger, it's gonna be putting soap on the floor. There's a little hook right here. You could take your cord and bring it up here, just click it into place so it's not all the way down there on the bottom. Maybe help you keep it from getting tangled up. Now you can pull this trigger when you're going forward and pull the trigger when you go back. But when you let off the trigger, it's just gonna be doing suction and spinning the cleaning brush. You can really just try both ways if you want. If you want to hold that button in and push it forward, hold the button in, pull it back, and then go over it one time without the button. Just that, that's just gonna help dry it quicker. But 
a lot of times I like to push the button, go forward, and then come back slowly and just suck it all up. I'm gonna clean this floor, my living room floor, and we'll see how much dirty water I got, then I will show you how to clean this. Now also, when you're just starting, you're gonna turn this on, and you're gonna pull that trigger, and you'll start to see the soap come in down here by the roller. When that soap starts coming in, you're ready to start cleaning. So I'm gonna turn it on. There you go, I started seeing soap already. And I like to overlap just a little bit. Now I think this Little spot here where I have that lemonade, I'm gonna go over that a couple times, definitely. I did go over it a couple times right by my door because it's probably dirtier over there. All right, that means she's full. All right, my first step to cleaning this is I'm gonna put it in that tray that comes with it. Just sit it in that tray like that. And you're gonna take, you're gonna take that little measuring cup. There's a little line on this. I don't know if you can see it on camera, you'll see it. Just fill it up to that line. And we're gonna dump it in right here. And that's gonna fill up this down in here right to, you'll see if you pick that up, it does say max right there. That looks close. Tilt this back, and turn it on. Do it one more time. I don't think it hurts. It's pretty easy. Yeah. If you could do that one or two times, I think it just helps clean out the roller, but my thing is completely full because I went through that whole tank. So I'm just gonna leave it like that and I'll show you how I clean the rest of this stuff. All right, now we're gonna tear this thing all apart and clean it. All right, there's a button right here that you can push down and then your dirty tank comes right off. This is all the dirty water that I just got from my kitchen and my living room. Looks pretty disgusting. Don't judge me, I got two dogs, two cats, a wife, and kids running. All right, to take this bottom off, you just, right here it says pull, exactly like it says, real easy to take out, just pull that. That clips off. You can put that in your sink. And your ro your cleaning roller, on the left-hand side, just pull that up. That pulls right out. You can put that in your sink, ready to get cleaned. All right, these are all our parts we gotta clean. You can also pull this filter out. That just comes right out of there, real easy. Now you can spray this off. Open this up, spray that out, let's do that.
Rinse this off a little bit. Rinse this out. Now this gray piece will pull right off of this the clear tank here. Just pulls right up. And we can also rinse this all off. Now you have your tank full of your gross water and there's a little strainer in there. You can pull that strainer out and that will get most of the big chunks out. So you don't dump that down your sink. Now you can take that, dump that in your garbage or your waste paper can. Now if you have a strainer, you might want to put a strainer in your sink, but mine's going in this utility sink that goes right into my upflush toilet that flushes everything. So I'm not too worried about this. But you might want to strain the rest of that because there's probably still some junk in there. I like to take my brush. I like to take some dishwashing detergent spray on that scrub that and rinse that out now I still have one more piece I'm going to clean but let me get this all done and I'll show you that one more piece. Right, I'm going to take some of these Clorox wipes or just take a, if you have some disinfectant spray or whatever you got, I just like something that's going to disinfect. Just wipe all this stuff down. I think that helps it from starting to stink. Take a couple paper towels. Wipe that out. Also take this piece and try to wipe this out a little bit. Can't hurt. Got to wipe that out with this paper towel a little. Let me wipe this piece off a little. Can't hurt. Bring this out a little more. Fluff it up. It helps it dry. And I like to pick the whole entire vacuum or the whole entire cleaner up, make sure it's unplugged. And I'm gonna just spray a little water down in this hole. Now there's probably some hair and crap in this. You can wipe some of that hair off. in this hole. Do this. Yeah, there we go. It's going to be hard for you to see, but I'm going to spray water down that hole. So clean this little tray off. I'm just going to take a paper towel now and just wipe, dry this off a little bit. It's a lot easier to do if you're not trying to record yourself. Let's dry this bottom off. And we can sit it back in that tray. Now you're going to probably have a little bit of water and cleaning formula in there. 
You could probably just leave that in there if you plan on using this in another week, but if you're gonna let this sit for a couple months, you might wanna dump that out. Now I just got all my pieces laying here in my my shower down in my shower. I'm gonna let these sit in here for about 24 hours, let them completely dry out. Another little tip I would like to show you, either you can put this, you could probably just sit this in that drying rack next to the other one if you want, but if you sit it down here, Make sure you don't, I don't recommend laying it down like that because then all the underside's not going to dry. So you got to keep that propped up somehow. You can prop it up on this like that so that way the air gets around that whole thing. I can let that all sit there for a good 24 hours, maybe a little longer. I have this up here. But that'll help that dry. Once all your pieces dry, you can put this back together. We're going to put the roller back in. This piece goes to the left. Then you have this piece is going to line up with the little cross here on the right hand side. So we just slide that in. And then you'll see this piece here on the left that says bezel on top. Just make sure that's facing up. Push that down in. Real simple. Then this piece here has a couple little hooks. One here on the left and one on the right. Those little hooks will go down in these little holes here. So you just put them hooks in there. And just clip it forward. We'll take our tank, drop the strainer down in. Take this up, your other piece here. Make sure you don't forget to put that filter on top. That only is gonna go in there one way. You can't put it this way. It doesn't fit in there, right? Then we're going to drop this piece down in our tank and then that'll clip in there just like that and it's ready to go for the next cleaning all right that's about it hope this video helped you out with learning how to run your Bissell Crosswave Pet Pro give this video a thumbs up please leave me a comment down below that really helps me out and if you really want to thank me hit that special thanks down below this video hit that subscribe button to help support my channel God bless and have a great day.